Okay, we're here at Challenge Roth and Bike Transition is just wrapping up, which means we have access to about 3,000 triathletes bikes. We're going to see what kind of technology and hacks and bodges we can find. So, who's going to find the best technology slash hack slash bodge? Ready? Ready. Steady? Go. Well, here's a bike you don't see in the wild very often. In fact, I'm not sure I've seen one for a long time. It's the Sipo Shadow R with its revolutionary, uh, it has no fork. Well, it does have a fork. The fork is just kind of like integrated into being horizontal. So it turns, uh, yeah, the whole thing with the wheel. Apparently it's really aero, but it definitely hasn't caught on in the bike industry. Uh, it is a striking looking bike though, very striking. Now this is seriously hardcore. I found a Canyon commuter bike here that just looks pretty simple. It's got flat bars um, and this is racked in an event where you have to cycle 180 kilometers. Hats off to number 2005. Pretty rad custom paint job going on on this bike. Obviously a pretty wild bike in itself. It's a Ventum, but look at this. It says, well, Costa Rica Pina Vida. It's got a toucan down on the down tube, seat tube, I don't really know what you call it on the Ventum. We've got a little frog on the front here. Very nicely done. Obviously storage in triathlon is always a challenge and an issue and we see all sorts of aerodynamic storage systems set up on the whole at the front of the bike, occasionally behind the saddle. Now this has obviously got space for two bottles behind the saddle and then we have this. Now I'd say this looks more like a bike packing setup and I'd love to know what's in there, but maybe a nice packed lunch for midway through the ride, or maybe a lot of spares. They're prepared for everything I reckon with that box. So we actually featured this uh, a little while ago on our tech tour that, that we did uh, in What The Tech on the show because we saw it on Seb Keenly's bike on his Scott. This is on a Canyon uh, and an age grouper bike. Uh, it's made by Radsport Ebert. I'm not sure whether the 3D printing is made by them. Uh, I think it might be. But essentially it's got two straws, one that goes into this actual compartment which holds about 500 mils uh, and then another one that goes down into the frame into the bladder that's inside the frame and that obviously allows you should have one drink mix in there that you can refill through this top tube uh, port and then another one in here that you can refill from this port up here. So essentially you've got two different drink mixes that you can fill in separately and drink from separately without ever leaving your aero bars. Pretty cool tech, uh, 3D printing going to the next level and he's got his 3D printed computer mount up there too. Futuristic. If you like a good paint job, check this out. Hulkamania. If you watch any of these before, you will know I love a bit of 3D printed tech, some customization, which honestly, I mean, I think the age groupers do a better job of it than the pros. They just go to town on this stuff. And so we've got some 3D printed kind of spacers that go up from the original spacers. And then we've got the kind of bridge going across and then spacers up built into the profile design cups. And it seamlessly is designed to kind of scoop into those. So good job, whoever this is. Number 2200. Okay, so here is someone who's gone to town with his 3D printer at home, potentially at home. Uh, so I'm going to start on the front of the bike. He's put these like special wedges in here, which seem to just be taped on, obviously to make him more comfortable in hand. Then he's sculpted his whole uh, armrests, which clearly fits his arms. But in between it, he's sculpted a uh, bottle cage. Clearly the bottle slides in from the side. It doesn't really look like it'll fit, but hopefully he's tested it. Uh, and he's put the bottle, the computer mount on top of that bottle, which is great. And then if you go further back, he's obviously got these really kind of far out there uh, 3T Revo team uh, bars on his BMC time machine. And then down here, he's got even more 3D printing. He's 3D printed like, it looks like a bento box and above it, you can put a bottle again that goes in from the side. I mean, he's clearly right-handed, all the bottles going from the side. Uh, and that looks like it lies perfectly horizontal. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a bit in here with me to actually see if it fits in perfectly, but we're gonna assume it does. 3D printing for the win. I hope you're not bored of all of our 3D printed designs we keep pointing out, but this one has caught my eye. I mean, basically the only thing that is different with this is its color. 
But look at this. I mean, I'm very curious as to the bright pink, partly because the, ba the rest of the bike is black with some red writing on here. And that makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. But yeah, it's an interesting design with the, again, with the shifters, one on top of the other. And I'm obviously not going to grab hold of this bike, but I'm curious as to how that's comfortable. It looks more like a sort of trigger for a gun for shooting up the road. But um, yeah, I'd love to know a little bit more about the, um, the idea behind not only the shape, but also the color. And I'm a fan of pink, by the way. Now I feel I need to do some matchmaking here within this transition zone because this bike needs to be matched with those pink aero bars. Speaking of paint jobs, this is not a paint job. This is actually a wrap and not a very well done wrap either. It's all like crinkled and stuff. It actually looks like it's a, it's like pixelated laminate flooring look, which is an interesting look for a bike. It's actually a, I think, Cervelo P3X underneath there. Uh, I'm not sure they've done it any favors by wrapping it in uh, pixelated wood, uh, wood laminate uh, wrap, but yeah, to each their own. Maybe it goes fast. And then over here, we've got uh, someone with their brownies or something underneath there, slowly cooking in the sun under the tin foil. I think you can cook chicken like that actually. You leave it in the sun under tin foil for long enough, and it'll cook. Hot meal on the go. I've seen oval chain rings, but this is another level. This is basically square. It says it's called Power Roval, Power Oval, uh, ovality 25%. Check it out. So it's not all about tech, it's also about execution. You've got to know what you're actually racing. So this person who has not gone to nth degree with their tech, but they do have some little uh, stickers on here. They've got. Uh, Pace goals, so one hour at Gridding and then again at three hours 25. Solaraberg at two hours and three and then again at four hours 26. On the other side, they've got the kilometer markers for each of those so they know exactly what they're tackling on race day. It's the small things that count. Now I spotted this bike being wheeled into transition and I've been looking for it for a couple of hours. So I'm very excited to come and find this Dave Russell beauty. Yes, I know I like pink, but that is not why I spotted this bike. Well. Partly. This is a classy coloured pink and it's just a super cool bike. Properly old. So the shifters are on the down tube still. And then if we move and look at the front end, look at these bars. I mean, it's kind of funny, isn't it? How bars used to be, well, in our era, used to be separate for the aero bars and they've now come back together. And this one is much older than any of the modern bikes. And it is basically a mono bar at the front. I think there's two separate bars that this owner has taped together. And I just don't know how comfortable that is going to be for 180k. I mean, I know we've done a retro triathlon, but that was a minimal distance on, yeah, in a far different setup. Still a very old looking saddle. I am incredibly impressed by the disc wheel on this bike. I mean, imagine we might see it shifting if you keep an eye out. Just a bit of a beauty. I'm on a roll here because I'm pretty excited we spotted another old school beautiful bike. This is the Anelli Pro and the paintwork is in really immaculate condition. I don't know if they've done some tuck chaps, but it's, don't know how old, but it's old. I mean, we've got shifters on the down tube again. Um, we've obviously got this rather impressive setup. I mean, this was state of the art back in the day, wasn't it? And now it's, it's kind of funny, but I just admire anyone who's going to ride 180 kilometers in the aero position on this i mean you never know it might be comfortable they might have it dialed in they might have even done a bike fit but hats off to just keeping some retro bikes in this field because we've got so many amazing new bikes which are beautiful but every now and then it's just quite refreshing to see something this unique so here's the latest in aero tech duct tape yeah he's duct tape over the ports on his uh, helmet which he might regret because it's going to be like over 30 degrees out there on the bike course and the only ports he's got is this tiny one at the back. Someone might regret that duct tape. Maybe he can just peel it off when it starts getting warm. Ah, maybe it is technology. All right, well, there is a lot to take in there. I hope you guys have enjoyed this walk around. I think we're going to do a part two, so stay tuned for that coming soon. And Mark will try to catch up on the, on the count, maybe. <laughs> uh, if you've enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss part two of our bike transition walk around. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.